So let's go step by step through these uh, key elements for the staging and grading of our periodontitis patients. So the first step is to identify the patient with, who is suspect of having periodontitis. And therefore, this step one is basically the screening for signs of periodontitis presence. Normally, when we have a new patient, we should have or we may have a radiograph, a full mouth x-ray or even a panoramic x-ray that we can evaluate or screen the situation and we need to evaluate for the presence of bone loss and if we can detect bone loss at more than two teeth then we have a patient that is suspect of periodontitis. If we do not detect any bone loss then we need to look for areas of interdental attachment loss of course using a periodontal probe and we need to assess this evidence at least in two or more teeth. If we are able to detect such attachment loss, then we have again a patient that is suspect of periodontitis. So either by evaluating the radiographs or by evaluating uh, clinically through a probing, we screen and we detect a patient as being suspect of periodontitis. If we don't have uh, radiographs available, then we should only go through the evaluation of clinical attachment loss or perhaps to uh, recommend the patient to have uh, a radiograph for uh, screening evaluation. Then we move into uh, the decision-making process, going through this uh, algorithm and you can see in the image the uh, different possibilities of a screening of a new patient. So uh, we repeat when seeing a patient for the first time we should first ask if there is a full mouth radiograph of adequate quality. If yes we should assess whether there is detectable marginal bone in every area of the dentition. If bone loss is detectable, the patient is suspect of having periodontitis. At the same time, irrespective of these radiographic records, we must clinically explore the patient and assess for interdental clinical attachment loss. If clinical attachment loss is detectable, then the patient is a possible case of periodontitis. If clinical attachment loss is not detectable, we must evaluate the presence of buccal recessions with probing depths greater than three millimeters. If such recessions are present, the patient is a possible periodontitis case. If there are no buccal probing pocket depths greater than three millimeters, we must evaluate for full mouth bleeding on probing. If this is present in more than 10% of the sites, the patient is then diagnosed with gingivitis. And if present in less than 10% of the sites, the present is diagnosed with periodontal health. So with this step one, we basically have screened the patients and would be either suspect of periodontitis or diagnosed of gingivitis or periodontal health.